backends, and we treat them as like down drives. So if you have a Dropbox account or if you have an Amazon account, we can actually put encrypted signed data there. And Amazon and Dropbox has no visibility to your data. You're just paying a flat, like whatever seven dollar fee. But you talk a little bit about the donations and what actually uh, you know brought us to the ideas that uh, led to this idea with us. And then I'm going to uh, talk about how it actually works. And then uh, uh, how it's being deployed. Uh, and actually, the last part is probably the, the part that I want to focus on a little bit more from a philosophical standpoint because that's. That's probably the hardest part of the, the whole thing as far as uh, you know, the, um, the issues of how you actually do that without breaking the network. So what is there really accounts in Bitcoin, but uh, this, this kind of serves as an illustration of uh, what, what the idea behind it is. So the effects of the check are um, all the things that tell you uh, who's paying who, where, you know, how much is being paid, you know, where it's coming from, where it's going, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is what's used to actually construct the ledger, um, and so uh, all the information that's necessary to actually know uh, what the ledger state is, is in the effects. And the signature is what, um, what um, authorizes the transaction. It's what makes it uh, valid on the network. It makes the, the nodes actually accept the transaction as uh, authorized. And there could be many different ways that a, a transaction could be authorized. For instance, in the case of a multi-sig transaction, there could be different signers. Uh, if was not taken, uh, maybe that's not necessary to actually make sure that the, that the contract is successful. So, uh, Merkleized abstract syntax trees allow us to compress all this by removing all the parts of the program that do not execute. Um, and it's not a Turing complete thing, there's only certain kinds of contracts that are uh, where you can really uh, use this, but I, it's, it's very likely that a lot of these uh, use cases are actually very practical. You can have um, UTXO commitments, for instance, in blocks that you can add uh, that, that make it possible to, uh, to, to make validation cheaper. And then, so cryptographic commitments, the, usual, the, way we, the, the, the tool that we use most to do this is Merkle trees, right? So in a Merkle tree, you uh, are able to have a root hash, and with this, you can prove the, the inclusion of any data that's in this uh, piece of, uh, this huge chunk of data without having to actually send the whole chunk of data. So uh, if you have, for instance, like a set of blocks, and you can prune it, and you, can only, you only keep the data that you want, and you can still store proofs that that data is part of the blockchain. So if you want to extend these cryptographic commitment structures, um, say that we have just like some, uh, some objects and some, uh, you know, some data that, that is uh, you know, serialized in some format, and then we hash it. Uh, if we add another field to it, uh, and, we, and we serialize it the same way, and we hash it again, we're going to get a changed hash. This means that nodes that are not aware of this new field are going to not be able to, to check the hash, and so you're basically going to get nodes that do not agree on what the hash is, and this is a huge problem. So by separating the stuff out, like by, in the case of like a, a transaction, also if we wanted to add new, there's other things that, uh, that, that, that we'd really like to be able to do that, that uh, it's like almost like by magic, uh, segregated witness allows us to do. Uh, and it, this includes uh, the quadratic hashing problem. And the quadratic hashing problem arises from, say they have this transaction that has a huge number of inputs, right? Um, every single input has a signature. The signature has to be um, validated, and to, to validate it, you need to compute a hash for the whole transaction. And currently, the way Bitcoin works, every single input requires you to hash all the other inputs every single time that you're checking every signature. So for n inputs, each one needs to check n other, it needs to hash n other inputs, so you get this n squared complexity. So for very, very large transactions with very large numbers of inputs, uh, it, it can take very, very long time to, to validate the transaction. Um, so this is a, this is a big problem. Uh, it does not require the use of the value, so you, you don't actually know how many bitcoins were, were transferred when you sign the transaction. So this means that wallets that want to be able to, uh, to securely sign transactions need to also store all the dependent transactions that they depend on so they can make sure that, you're, for instance, uh, you know, the, the wallet might tell you that it's only one bitcoin, but maybe you're actually signing 10. It's committed in the Coinbase transaction. So, um, if you see here, the, the uh, top diagram shows the hash, uh, the hash of the transaction without the witness. So that's the TXID. That's what's used. That's the, the transaction ID that's not malleated. Then you have hashes with witnesses included also. So it's two different, two different hashes for the same transaction, one including the witness and one without the witness. And we commit them separately. We commit the, the TX hashes without the witnesses the way we do right now in the Merkle uh, root of the, the um, of, of the block as it exists, and then inside the Coinbase transaction, we nest another commitment, which is of the hashes of, with the witnesses. 
So um, if we wanted to add a new commitment uh, tree at the root, it would require a hard fork. And if we ever do a hard fork in Bitcoin, this is actually one of my pet things that I would really like to be able to do, is to extend the, um, the, the commitment structure at a very basic level to be able to have like a nonce in there that you can just add new trees into. Unfortunately, that's not the way Bitcoin works right now. So um, if we wanted to add new commitments and have a new root, uh, this would require a hard fork. Uh, task wrapped witness programs. Uh, the native witness programs are, um, we were able to uh, to make it, uh, you know, it, it, it adds some upsides, which is that it's more efficient, more, more efficient in coding, and it has a stronger hash collision resistance. So instead of using 20 bytes, like for uh, pay to script hash that we were using with, uh, what we're using right now, like the, the addresses start with a three in Bitcoin, which are P2SH, uh, we uh, use 32 byte um, hashes. But the downsides are that uh, it cannot receive uh, coins from old wallets. It requires a new address type. So uh, backwards compatibility is a problem. So for new wallets, sending money to each other, sending bitcoins to each other, it's fine. This is actually the, the recommended way to do it. But we wanted to make sure that, that you can have uh, backwards compatibility with old wallets provide a higher level uh, interface into the network. But there's a, there's a really big difference between the way the internet works and the way Bitcoin works, which is a little problematic, which is that in the case of the internet, um, higher layers uh, correct or mitigate errors in the lower layers. And in the case of uh, Bitcoin, uh, uh, higher layers actually amplify the errors in the lower layers. So there's very, very little tolerance for error. This means that if there's any error at the consensus layer, uh, by the time it gets to the applications, applications have already diverged. They don't agree. They can't send each other anything. They, they don't understand each other. Um, so there's a huge problem, and like for instance, if you have this, uh, if you have a blockchain where uh, one particular block it has an invalidity, uh, but it doesn't get caught for whatever reason. Let's just say that uh, there's a bug in a particular implementation, and nobody, you know, caught it, and everyone keeps on mining on top of that, and, and then later on, after several blocks on mine, it's like, oh hey, this block was invalid. Well, what do we do now? I mean. See, these, all these blocks would have to be invalidated, and if it's very long, we're talking about having to reverse a whole bunch of transactions from the entire economy, and you know, after a long enough period of time, basically everyone is affected. So every single person that's transacting on the network would be affected by this kind of a thing, and it's very plausible that at this point people would just say, you know what, screw the consensus rules, let's just uh, you know, make an exception, uh, well, let's just make this block valid anyways because it's too disruptive to, to invalidate at this point. And so now, um, what happens is that you get this consensus failure, uh, or you get this, uh, um, you, you get a failure of, of the actual uh, algorithmic consensus. Uh, basically, now uh, you're, you're, you're relying on human judgment whether a particular block is valid or not, rather than, than the algorithmic rules. And this, of course, adds a, a whole bunch of attack vectors and ugly stuff can happen. So, um, the more complex the validation process is, the more expensive it is to do. Um, the more uh, it increases the chances of, of uh, there being an in-caught invalidity, uh, an uncaught invalidity, and this means that uh, it's much more likely that we do run into this situation at some point, um, and, and it could be really, really expensive when it does happen. So um, I, I think you know one of the, the uh, goals that we have is to try to reduce validation costs as much as possible, and if we are to increase, uh, you know, if we want to scale Bitcoin, uh, we need to offset any increases in the throughput of transactions with a reduction in the cost somewhere else to make sure that you don't get this uh, situation. Well, a lot of the libraries, like uh, I believe Bitcoin J and uh, LibBitcoin, um, already have added support, uh, and also NBitcoin. So all of the wallets that rely on those uh, are, are going to pretty easily be able to integrate with it. Uh, my, my own wallet, our own wallet from Cypherx, uh, has support for it already. Um, and. Um, what other? I mean, obviously, the, the Bitcoin Core wallet has support for it, um, and it's. I think that at this point, the, the, the integration on the wallet level is pretty simple for, for most wallets. So uh, we're we're optimistic that it's going to happen. Some wallet uh, manufacturers are still waiting for activation.